I should tell a brief basketball story before I introduce Bill Russell. And uh, what I was going to say was when I played basketball in North Tulsa at McLean High School, they called me the Minute Man. I kept saying, Coach, can I play? And it goes, in a minute, man, just sit down and be quiet. So that was the story. That's what I was supposed to tell. But, but I decided to tell another story because we've learned that why not tell a baseball story? Because it's kind of cool. And most of you know this by now. But with Bill Russell and our, our next honoree and all is, is the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals who won the World Series, for God's sakes. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't it, Tony. We gotta introduce you, buddy. Tony Lewis. Come on. We got some Cardinal fans here. Thanks for being here. It's kind of fun, isn't it? You, you just never know what's gonna happen at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Thank you for being here. Okay, listen to all this. Bill Russell's a five-time winner of the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. Five times. Twelve-time All-Star. He was the foundation for the Boston Celtics' 11 NBA championships and captain of the gold medal U.S. national team at the Summer Olympics in Melbourne, Australia. He's a member of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Now, here's the most important part, I think. The NBA has named their MVP trophy in this gentleman's honor. He earned his first VP. He earned his own first MVP right here in Oklahoma City as a member of the University of San Francisco team during the 1955 All-College Tournament. Think about that. Bill Russell playing right here in Oklahoma City. Most recently, President Barack Obama presented him with the Medal of Freedom, which is our nation's highest honor. Oklahoma, please welcome an absolute hero, Bill Russell. in high school, Marcus Haynes was the star of the Harlem Globetrotters. Now what made him so unique? The Harlem Globetrotters at the time were a team for entertainment. And in the projects where I lived, basketball was about competition. It demonstrated skills with the Globetrotters. We quickly recognized he was a great basketball player. And what he accomplished being a great basketball player <coughs> playing with the Globetrotters was he demonstrated a high skill level and was able to conduct himself with an entertaining troupe to play with dignity. And for us in the projects, that was extraordinarily important that we could look to one of our stars that conducted himself with dignity. And so that uh, he was the one that you brought on us we did not mind imitating. <laughs> uh, Marcus was a great high school and college player. And what's significant about tonight is that he's honored on his home soil. And that's the toughest place to get honored. <laughs> because did everybody know you? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was incredibly uh, flattered when they asked me to come here to honor Marcus Haynes. Now, I must confess that uh, the thrill of coming to Oklahoma City was underwhelming. <laughs> but 
I must tell you, I'm struck by what a vigorous, dynamic community you have here. And you know, uh, Clay Bennett, my friend, uh, borrowed our team. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Seattle. And uh, Clay's name's a no-no. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this is not about me or Clay. This is about Marcus Haynes. And uh, one of the young men that I admired greatly as a child growing up in Oakland, California. And uh, I would like to present a uh, video clip of Marcus Haynes. Known as the world's greatest dribbler, Marcus Haynes could dribble the basketball three times per second, maintaining the dribble one inch off the floor and from any position. He was still showing off his dribbling skills at his induction into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, the first globetrotter to be named to the hall. He joined the Harlem Globetrotters following graduation from Langston University. He was 20 years old. The Globetrotters first spotted Haynes while playing an exhibition game against the university, a game where he scored 28 points. His professional basketball career spanned 51 years. He has played in more than 12,000 games, scored more than 250,000 points, and traveled to more than 100 countries to entertain crowds. Marcus Haynes was pure skill, entertaining, and a true team player. These characteristics made him one of the best known and most respected among his teammates and his peers. His basketball career has afforded him many opportunities. He has traveled the world, mentored those who have followed him, been the focus of a number of publications, started a movie on the famous troupe, and even developed an educational program for local school districts. It was during his time in the fashion business in New York City, while still playing more than 100 games per year, that he met Joan Taylor, a model who auditioned for the Biela line. They were married one year later. Throughout his career, he has developed friendships that remain an important part of his life. He never turns down the opportunity to recognize and celebrate the successes of those closest to him and continues to enjoy weekly rounds of golf. Haynes credits the love and support of his parents, Emmanuel and Hattie Haynes, and his siblings for instilling in him the courage and wisdom to allow this Sand Springs boy to follow his dreams. Marcus Haynes. And I must say, in all honesty, that uh, I am really proud of the fact that you think of me with many, many things that you've said, not only here probably tonight, but in and around the world. Not say just the country, but in and around the world, because I know too that you've done as much traveling as I have. And I've traveled throughout 103 different countries in this world, and I've done an awful lot, I feel, when it came to the game of basketball and helping to promote it. In fact, uh, uh, in 1950, we gave the very first basketball clinic in France. And we started from France into Germany, and throughout the entire European area, we gave basketball camps. Then from there, we left uh, the following year and going into Australia. And there, 
they had uh, some game they called it, uh, 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 I forget what kind of basketball, it wasn't basketball, but they weren't playing basketball. They had a basketball, you know, they shot, shot, shot uh, balls up there for the, uh, uh, as their game. And we gave clinics there in, in Australia. In fact, there were uh, clinics all over the world that we, the Harlem Globetrotters, gave uh, in starting the game of basketball in different countries. Now, I played basketball here in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in this state. First out at Sand Springs, Oklahoma. If you don't know what the location of it, it's 11 miles to the west of Tulsa. Tull And then, then too, of course, basketball at Langston University at the time that I was able to get into college. But now, I had, a, I had a, a kind of a rough time getting into college. There at my church in Sand Springs, uh, at the First Baptist Church, they gave out a scholarship every year to the student that graduating that uh, was a member of the, of the church, uh, an amount of money. And I... Uh, was the one that qualified for that scholarship. And I qualified with, for it mainly because not that I had the best uh, grade points and everything else coming out of high school. And the good factor about it was the fact that I was the only one at the church that graduated. <laughs> so, I didn't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I had a couple of brothers who attended school at Langston University, and I wanted to kind of fall in, in, uh, in that path. So uh, how was I going to get there? But right after church that day, I went up to get the $25, and the, uh, the reverend said, well, no, Marcus, what you'll have to do is get it after you get after school. You know, that's all right. You know, I got a scholarship. All right, now to get to Langston, 82 miles from where I live, there in Sand Springs. I didn't have the money to get there. I didn't have, uh, I had a few few coins, I think I said, I had something like 35, 36 cents. And, but I stood in front of my house, which was right on the highway, South Section Line, going, and, and trying to get to Langston, and hitchhiking. I called 16 rides that day to go in, <laughs> 82 miles. <laughs> Uh, to go 82 miles, the last two miles were from Coyle, uh, Coyle, Coyle yeah, Oklahoma, into Langston, a couple of miles. And the guy that uh, left me off there said, well, Marcus, look, uh, if I wasn't running late for this uh, 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 meeting that I have, I'd take you on out to Langston. But you stand there, somebody will come along and pick you up. Well, I'll take his word for it. So I stood there for about uh, 45 minutes hitchhiking trying to get to Langston. I didn't know exactly how far it was. The guy told me about two miles. And then, so shortly thereafter, a the horse and wagon came along. And the guy had to say, hey, fellow, where, where are you trying to get to? I said, well, sir, I'm trying to get to Langston. I don't know exactly how far it is. He said, well, it's just up the road here a couple of miles. Why don't you hop on? I said, OK, I'll hop on. I hopped on and, and uh, rode the two miles. I got out to, we, he let me off there at the gate. And uh, I said, well, I guess what I'll do is just a uh, lot of gag along and going up, up there. And so one of the fellas came by from Seminole, Oklahoma, who I played ball against uh, in, in, in high school. And uh, he was coming in from uh, the store, and he said, Marcus, I said, uh, I said when'd you get here? I said, well, I just got here. I'm trying to get up here to the, to the, uh, to, to the campus. He said, well, come on. And uh, I'll show you where to go. I said, yeah, that's where I got to go, to the, uh, to the uh, money room, I called it, the money room. <laughs> I, I got there and uh, to get my $25. And the lady said, well, here's what you do, Marcus. You sign on the line right here, which, which, which was all right with me. I signed on the line right there. And I stood there, and I stood there. And I asked her, I said, well, look, what am I going to get my $25? <laughs> she said, no. You don't get this $25, so you're getting it, all right, but it's your, for your tuition for to go. I said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? I'm going to get back home. <laughs> so, so I remember, I remember this guy uh, who had worked for my brother on the yard out of Langston, on the yard cutting grass, and his name was Uncle Bill. I said, well, could you tell me, please, where Uncle Bill is? <laughs> he said, Uncle Bill, 
I said, yes. I said, he's a fellow that takes care of that. She said, oh, okay. So she told me where Uncle Bill was. So I went over and introduced myself to him. I threw him Marcus hands. He said, oh, yeah, you had a, a brother that worked for me. I said, that's what I come to, to uh, that's what I was looking for you for. I want to work because I can't get back home. He said, well, why don't, why don't you go into college? I said, well, I'll go to college if I can get some work. He said, well, come on, you're working for me now. So he put me on the, on the, uh, on the yard. Wanted to know if I could uh, knew what, how to push a lawnmower, to push lawnmowers, and have these motor things during those years. <laughs> but at any rate, he's one, he said, do you know anything about fixing? I said, yeah, I can fix it. I can take it off and take it loose and put it all back together. He said, well, you're my man. You take, I got five out there, you fix those, come back. All right, I worked for him for just a short while. And Zip Gales, who was a coach out at Langston, he didn't do any recruiting. He was, he was a coach, basketball coach. And he saw me, and he recognized, said, well, look, aren't you the guy that played for Sand Springs? I said, yes, sir. He said, you the guy that played in uh, the Tuskegee, Alabama, and, uh, and the, uh, all uh, the national black school uh, 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 tournament? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, why don't you come on out here and let me take, see you take a few shots and run around the court there for a while. I said, uh, well, okay. So he gave me a pair of sneakers and some pants to put on and, and just a jersey to put on. You know, I'm a big college player now. I haven't, I haven't bounced the ball at all. And I said, well, what do you want me to do now, sir? Well, I just want you to go out there and run a little bit and shoot. I said, he said, well, what did you do first? You start running around the court. I said, well, okay. He said, take a few laps around the court. So I took some laps around. I took about 15 laps around the court. And he stood there watching me. He said, well, take a few more. And I kept running and running. Hey, guess what? I got tired. I said, can I shoot a little bit? <laughs> well, I, I, had a, I had a great time. And fortunately, we ended up with a great team out of Langston. We played, uh, we had, uh, out of 113 games, we won 100 of them. We lost three games in my freshman year, and then we went on to feed the last three years. And I ended up uh, making uh, the All-American Black College team uh, for that year. And it was just a great thing. But I, I enjoyed it all. And I think I played longer, I played basketball longer than anybody ever even attempted to play the game of basketball. I, I played for the Gold College from 1946 to, to 53, and then I played for the Magicians from late 53 into 98. I didn't retire until 98. So I played professional basketball from 1946 to 1998. <laughs> and I played it in Chautauqua, Kansas, and I was happy to play it. Nobody else has played that long, and I don't think anybody else ever will. But at any rate, I had a great life. A great life in the, in the basketball world. I've just had a great life in the world. I can go just about any place in this world as somebody who I know, and I still stay in correspondence with a lot of people throughout this country. But, you know, it's been a great life for me. I'm still living. I'm going to live a lot longer, and I uh, thank God for all of it. Thank you. <laughs>